Okay, so now, how does fat get stored? Now, this is the, 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 the million dollar question. We want to know how it gets stored because obviously it gets stored. So the main hormone that stores fat is insulin. Insulin is secreted by the pancreas and it is secreted every time we eat something. So if we eat, uh, whether it be carbohydrates, fats, or protein, it's going to secrete insulin. Now the amount of insulin that is secreted goes in relation to the amount of, 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 of those, um, whether it be, if it's proteins, amino acids, if it's fat, or if it's uh, carbohydrates, which is glucose, depending on how much we have floating around in the bloodstream, the body will uh, secrete enough insulin to uh, store it. Now, the way it works, the way insulin works is, it, when it gets secreted, it tells the body to do three things. It basic three functions that the, the body has to accomplish when insulin is detected. Okay, the first thing is absorb. So, you eat something, it gets absorbed. Obviously, it gets absorbed into the bloodstream. That's the first thing. The second thing it does, or it tells the body to do, is stop breaking down sugars, proteins, and fats. So, if you have, um, uh, you know, basically, if you eat something, you're not exactly exercising at the same time you're eating. You basically, when we eat, we sit down, we, we enjoy our food, so that's when your body is saying, you know what, stop breaking down all the, the, the fat that, you know, if it's, if, it's using up, if it's using fat for fuel, it stops that right away because now it has new fuel uh, to start working with. And then the last thing it tells it to do is start because if it tells it to stop to do something, it's going to tell it to start doing something else. So now what it tells it to do is start building, um, for example, glucose into glycogen, um, uh, fatty acids uh, into triglycerides, which is the storage, and then of course, um, protein becomes amino acids. Okay, those are the three things that, um, those are the three basic commands insulin tells the body to um, as far as when it gets secreted, it tells it what to do. So now, regardless of, of the three macro un, uh, nutrients that we eat, whether it be carbohydrates, fats, or protein, don't think that um, one is necessarily better than the other in terms of not becoming fat. All three can become fat. Now, protein being the one that uh, it takes more time to digest, and, 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 and uh, get absorbed and stored, protein can turn into fat. It's just a more costly process. But in terms of efficiency, just so that you get an idea of, of efficiency, if we take 100 grams of fat, okay, and the body has to take 100 grams of fat and store it, it only takes 2.5 calories to do this process. Now we take those same 100 grams and we instead of fat, we're going to use glucose. The process um, for converting and storing that, those 100 grams of, of glucose, it costs the body 23 calories. So in comparison to fat, it's a lot less efficient okay, to convert glucose into fat than it is to convert fat into fat. So if you have a lot of fat, you're going to you're going to basically get you, uh, your body is basically going to store it much quicker. So in the case of visceral fat, if you're consuming high amounts of saturated fat, well, now we know how we get um, the visceral fat to form so quickly. Okay, and especially if you're not active, because if you're not active, you're not using the fat, and if you're not using the fat, the body is not going to throw it away. If it's not going to throw it away, it's going to save it. So um, that's where it becomes important. Um, when you're thinking about dieting and, and eating habits and such, okay? So basically, if you're less active and you eat and you eat a lot, you're going to get uh, stored fat. So that's basically um, the process of how it gets stored. Okay, so now we know that um, fats get stored uh, with the use of insulin. So obviously, um, we want to um, avoid eating more than we can actually uh, use up. So basically if, we're, if, if we have this big, big, huge plate of food and we eat it and then we don't do anything, we just sit down and watch TV all day, 
Well, the body's only going to be using um, probably less than half or, or up to half of what you're what you actually consume, depending on the calories. And then, of course, the excess, because you're not using it, it's going to be stored. And then if you go and you eat again, before um, you use up this stored energy, okay, um, you know, it's, it's floating around and you eat again, well, it's going to stop, okay, using that energy that was um, floating around. It's going to start storing. So, repeated um, um, actions of this, you know, eating a lot and then uh, not doing enough activity and then eating a lot and then, you know, you keep doing this repetitive action. Over time, you start accumulating fat and it's, it's just sneaky the way it, it, it happens. But next thing you know, you look at yourself in the mirror and bam, you're like, oh man, where did my physique go? And that's basically how it happens. It's, it's, you don't gain it overnight. It does take time, but um, it is so sneaky and um, it, it does happen. So, so that's the, the basic thing. Now, another thing about fat is that um, when people think about losing fat, um, you got to realize that, and this is all with, with the research I've done, you got to realize that you can't actually get rid of fat. You never can get rid of fat. It, it, the body will not destroy fat cells. Okay, so basically fat cells, it's just a, it's like a, a, a tank of gas, okay? And you, you fill up this fat cell up to capacity. When it reaches, and this is according to the research I did, okay, so um, don't quote me on this, but um, one, one place that I researched actually stated that um, when the fat cell increases its size and it reaches to about three, th three times its, its normal size, it will split and become two cells. So basically, if you, if using that um, bit of information, if that one cell becomes so large, okay, becomes up to its maximum capacity, the body will see that and say, you know what, I need more. And it will make another fat cell. And then that fat cell now has a chance to get filled up. So um, the, more, the more fat we have, okay, or the more fat we're storing, the more fat cells are going to be created. But now when we exercise and we, we tone down and we, we, we use up this stored energy, um, the fat cells are still there. I mean, we do shrink them, we do deplete the cells of their energy, but they're still there. So now you know why uh, some people, when they go on a diet, they'll get thin, and then they'll go back to that old eating habits, and instantly they, they inflate. They basically gain all that weight back. And that's because, well, now they have a lot more cells to fill up. Because just because you lose the weight doesn't mean you're getting rid of the fat cells. Now, there is one way to get rid of the fat cells, and that's physically removing them. And in this case, liposuction. That's the only way to get rid of the fat cells. But um, it's a costly procedure, and it's probably painful. I know I wouldn't want to do it. So I'd rather just prevent my fat cells from turning into more fat cells. And then the ones that I do have, I want to um, use up that energy. So now the last thing I want to cover is um, uh, the process that I actually had to go through and, and, and learn for the problem that I had, and that was visceral fat. <clears throat> now I did state that in the process of getting rid of visceral fat, you will get rid of subcutaneous fat, which is a bonus. You kill two birds with one stone. But the process of getting rid of visceral fat, according to the research that I did, is, uh, is, is actually a lot more uh, difficult. So now I'm going to go and refer to my notes here uh, because I wanted to, to get this correct um, rather than try to get it on memory. So basically, to um, reduce visceral fat, okay, and this is, this is um, research done at Duke's University over an eight-month period by Chris Slentz, PhD, and he's, he basically uh, stated in his research that to get rid of the visceral fat, you'd have to jog 17 miles a week, so 2.5 miles a day, and that would decrease, or according to his research, it decreased 8.1% of the visceral fat, the fat that is inside the organs. We're not even talking about the subcutaneous fat, we're just talking about the visceral fat. Obviously, if you're jogging two and a half miles 
um, a day every day for a week, which I would suppose a week would be six days, and then the seventh day you rest, um, you're gonna lose the subcutaneous fat as well as the visceral fat. But uh, for this um, for this research, he was just concentrating on visceral fat, and this is what I really wanted to find out. Now, if you're if if you can't do 17 miles, okay, and and um, you decide that oh well I want to do 11 miles. He did his research also pointed out that if you only do 11 miles, if, if you don't do the full 17 miles and you only do 11 miles of jogging a week, you do not get any decrease or increase of visceral fat. Basically, your visceral fat will be at a standstill. You won't get any more and you won't lose any. So whatever you have, you'll stick with. Well, that would be good if you have very little visceral fat. Um, and and you want to make sure that you don't get any more. Now, um, an equivalent to the 11 miles a week, um, there was also one other thing that that the research mentioned, and 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 a lot of people mentioned this, doctors and such. They would say, as long as you do at least 30 minutes uh, of walking, or maybe brisk walking, um, six times a week that will halt the increase of visceral fat. And so, um, another thing that I found in my research is that um, to get rid of the, the most effective way to get rid of visceral fat is high intensity workouts. And you really have to put your body into motion to get rid of this visceral fat. It's not this slow steady state cardio that everybody preaches about to get rid of fat. Now, that works on subcutaneous fat, the fat under the skin, but it does nothing to the visceral fat according to, to what I researched. So if you want to get rid of the visceral fat, which is what I wanted to do, yeah, the thing that worked best for me in, 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 in my experience okay, was high intensity work. I mean, um, and you'll see this in future videos, um, I will explain how I did it and, and, and the tools that I used to actually monitor my intensity levels. but. Um, what worked best to get my tummy down was doing high intensity work. Uh, the low steady state didn't even put a dent on my belly. I mean, yes, it, 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 it made me lose some weight, but it didn't do anything to, to, to my big old belly. So to get rid of that visceral fat, you have to do high intensity work. And so um, if, if you're at that point where you have it, I would advise that you go ahead and, and make the effort and do that high intensity. Whether it be an equivalent to 17 miles a week, um, that's basically what the research showed to get 8.1% um, down in visceral fat and so that's basically what I do. Um, I do high intensity work to get rid of my visceral fat. So now knowing all this stuff, I'm, I'm, that's pretty much completes um, what I wanted to talk about as far as fat. And knowing all of this, I'm hoping that this helps you guys in, in um, planning out a strategy in trying to get rid of the target fat that you want to get rid of, whether it be uh, visceral, as in my case, or subcutaneous fat, which is, you know, the case of many, many others, especially young adults. Um, and I'm hoping that, that this video was very informative and helpful. Um, it, it, I, I try to pack in a lot of information. Um, I know this video is, it was a little long, but um, um, I try to do it as short as possible. But I wanted to make sure I, I, I get all the research I did um, on fat um, because I did a lot of research. I mean, there's, there's so much more, but this is just basically um, the key points in, in describing fat. And this, knowing all these things that I, I talked about, for me personally, knowing all these things about fat made it so much easier to realize what task I had to do or what route I had to, to actually uh, choose uh, for that journey on achieving a better body. So hopefully this, this will help you and let's, let's go out there and let's make a better body.